welcome back everyone. Today I am going to present you different facets and theories that have been long debated on the topic the Big Bang. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to my channel to see my latest videos. For at least 200 years, science tells us that any ideas of spirituality could represent the remnants of a superstitious past. But the truth is that physics is not as antagonistic to religions and spirituality as many would think. In 1964, the scientific world was literally shocked by a new theory, but very few at the time understood exactly what it was all about. This was perhaps the deepest discovery in science. The 1964 theory was later confirmed and reproduced in laboratories around the world on numerous occasions, and today there is no doubt that it was initially correct. It's about Bell's theory, which is trying to find a new way to better understand today's world. Starting with the 16th century, with the invention of the telescope by Galileo Galilei and the observation of outer space, classical physics was born in the form of a rational empiricism. Geniuses like Newton or Einstein consolidated this science, which seemed to explain the universe in which we live. But can it really explain everything? Some scientists have noticed from the beginning that there are some things that don't seem to fit. In 1801, for example, the British physicist Thomas Young conducted the double slit experiment in an attempt to deduce the true nature of light. Prior to this, it was assumed that light is composed of small particles of matter, but the result of the Young experiment seemed to clearly indicate that light is in fact a wave. It was assumed therefore that light waves would need an environment to propagate, an environment called ether. Despite numerous detection attempts, the ether has not been discovered so far. In 1900, the American physicist Max Planck developed a mathematical model that showed that light seemed to exist in the form of packages of matter. Planck called these packages quantum, after the Latin quantus, which translates as a lot. Planck's discovery gave rise to what we call quantum physics today, that is, the study of that group of infinitely small particles that make up matter. However, since then, despite the efforts of great physicists, the great problem in physics has remained the nature of light. Is light composed of particles or where? No one can answer clearly. Meanwhile, remarkable progress has been made in the opposite direction, exploring the depths of the universe. In 1929, by carefully analyzing the redshifts, observed frequencies of light of distant galaxies, American astronomer Edwin Hubble demonstrated that our universe is expanding. An expanding universe was evidence contrary to the equilibrium theory of the universe, that is, a universe that is essentially constant and eternal. Hubble's finding also suggested that our universe, as it is expanding, must have had a beginning, that is, a time when all matter was concentrated in a single point, which then expanded. Thus, was born what we now call the Big Bang Theory of the Universe. The Big Bang Theory postulates that the universe arose from a singularity, which means a point of infinite density. However, humorist Terry Pratchett was right here joking once 
At first, it was nothing. It exploded. According to the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago, there was an incredibly small and hot spot of matter. It swelled, expanded, and then cooled over time, allowing the formation of light elements such as hydrogen and helium. Due to a slightly uneven distribution of matter through the universe, gravitational attraction then began to consolidate these elements into clouds, which later formed stars, planets, and galaxies. However, this point of view is a mechanical one, because it assumes that the universe is a deterministic one, lacking will or consciousness, obeying only mechanical laws according to cause and effect. But the enigma of light continued to affect this theory of the determinism of physics, the law of cause and effect. In 1927, for example, the German physicist Werner Heisenberg conducted an experiment trying to measure the exact velocity and position of a particle in order to predict its future position a process that would have been entirely within the accepted parameters of Newtonian physics. But Heisenberg found that this could not be done. The British physicist Stephen Hawking tells us that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle unequivocally indicates that the more accurately one tries to measure the position of the particle, the less accurately one can measure velocity and vice versa. This finding sent a shockwave into the world of physics. In 1964, the theory of physicist John Stewart Bell took shape. This showed that the universe is in fact unlocated. An unlocated effect is an interaction that does not involve any force nor any transfer of signals and happens instantly, regardless of the distance between objects. And not only that, repeatedly Bell's theory was tested in the laboratory and proved to be accurate. Science is now very clear. We live in a universe that is unlocated. As physicist Brian Greene of Columbia University said, this is a shocking result. This is the kind of result that should take our breath away. Non-localized interactions are so constructed in the fabric of the universe that we cannot observe them. But that does not mean that we cannot observe their effects. For as Herbert explains, the present situation seems to be this. Quantum theory is superluminal, faster than the speed of light. Quantum reality is superluminal, but quantum appearances are not. Since quantum theories of consciousness assume that all the individual causes of quantum events are in the mental world, and Bell's theory shows that all causes of quantum events must be superluminally connected, so we should expect to find some mental events that behave like the Bell connection. The material mechanistic cosmos to which physics referred in the beginning is no longer a reality. The universe is not made up of hundreds of billions of galaxies located at colossal distances, seemingly unrelated. It rather seems to be a true work of art, being capable of infinite and instantaneous communication. This means that the universe itself seems more like a unitary and conscious organism. The great British physicist Sir James Jeans once said, The universe is being to look more like a big thought than a big car. And this view is beginning to be shared by as many physicists as possible today. 
Well, this was all for today, so if you liked my video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel to see my latest videos. Thank you very much. See you next time.